Hey guys, welcome to Insight New York City Dance, giving you an inside look at the dance world in New York City. I'm your host, Ashini Infuko, and we're taking you to Broadway today, guys. Fela came back to Broadway this summer for a limited engagement, and I had the pleasure of sitting down with rhythm tap dancer Jalan Lambert and finding out what it's really like to be in Fela on Broadway. It was really, really fun. He was very sweet. And speaking of tap and dance in New York City, I have master tap teacher Jermaine Goodson on the show today. Oh yeah, she has a very, very unique story she's gonna share with us today. She teaches at the Ailey Extension here in New York City, so you're gonna to get to know a little bit about her. And then last but not least, I'm so honored to have Dr. Linda Hamilton on the show today. She is a clinical psychologist specializing in wellness for performers and performance psychology. Yes, that is a term. You may not have heard it before, but it is. And she's gonna help us to deal with stress and anxiety and rejection and negative thoughts, all the things that dancers and artists face every single day here in New York City. It's gonna be a fantastic show. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're watching. So let's get started. Hello, and I'm here with my first guest, master tap teacher and performer, Jermaine Goodson. She is a teacher at Steps on Broadway here in New York City and also the Ailey Extension. Welcome to the show, Jermaine. Hi, Ashni. I'm happy to be here. I'm really excited. Thank you. I'm happy to have you. Thank I've you. heard your name for years, for years, and probably at Steps, maybe a little bit at Broadway Dance Center years ago. Yes. But you're very well known in the, in the dance community and very well respected. I'm curious as to why you wanted to become a tap dancer in the first place? Well, I love tap dancers. I'm inspired by many of the greats. Gregory Hines, uh, Henry Latang, Fred Astaire, uh, Gene Kelly. There's so many that I'm inspired by. And I continue to just give presence and passion back to what they gave us, to back to my students. And what inspired you to become a tap teacher? I love the rhythms. I love rhythms and I love music and I love the sounds that mm -hmm. come with all that. And it's just a special talent that most people really don't take an interest to, and I try to make people like it. You, you try to make them like it. She's going to force you I to like it. I want you to like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you went to school. You got your undergrad degree in child psych psychology. Child psychology, yes. and then you went to graduate school. Graduate school. Yeah. So why from child psychology into this crazy world of tap in New York City and then internationally? Okay. Well, I started dancing when I was three years old. I had ballet and acrobatics. Mm -hmm. And at, when I became seven, I started taking tap and jazz and modern and all kinds of, of, of different genres of dance. But I really took a personal interest in being a great jazz and tap teacher, jazz and tap dancer. Mm -hmm. So when I grew up, I started student teaching in tap for my aunt's dance studio. And I loved it so much that I wanted to oh, oh, own my own studio. So in California, I had a chance to have my own dance studio as well. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So how did you go from that to traveling around the world with Cab Calloway? Like, how does that happen? Um, I was in graduate school, and I started auditioning for just tap shows. Mm -hmm. I really started with a movie. It was called The Gangster Chronicles. And that came out before the, the Cotton Club actually came out. Okay. So I wanted to do Broadway after I did the the, had the opportunity to do the film, I wanted to do Broadway, so I had to move back to New York. Mm -hmm. And I auditioned for Marie Sines and Mercedes Ellington, and they put me in their company. Wow. And we traveled around the world just with them. It was called Ballet Tap at the time. Mm -hmm. And after that uh, experience ended, then it was an opportunity for me to meet the great um, choreographer, Henry Letang. And he put us together, it's three of us, that mm -hmm. became the Rhythm Queens. And from the Rhythm Queens, then we the, Cap Calloway saw us and asked us to travel with him and be in his opening act for his show. So I've had a great opportunity to travel with yeah. Cap and to really just, you know, understand the business through his eyes. And he was here before many, many people. So mm -hmm. he gave me great opportunities to just work with him. Wow. And you've been in Broadway shows, you've been yes. in off Broadway shows. Yes. What has that experience been like for you as a performer and then also as a teacher? As a teacher, I taught at Ailey, the school of Ailey, mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing Black and Blue on Broadway. I did eight shows a week, and I taught 18 classes a week oh, at the same oh time. Gosh. So <laughs> I love TAP. So I was always giving back to my students and encouraging that dreams do come true. And I just really wanted them to know that 
if you really set your, your goals to be in a show, you have to work for it mm -hmm. and you really have to study. And I had the greatest technique in tap and jazz and ballet, so that helped me to really get a job in yeah. those areas. And I love teaching, so at the same time when I was performing, I was also teaching the tools to get people where they need to go. Right. So. I loved it. Wow. Talk about a hard working woman. Yes. That's how it is though in the no, city, really right? As to. artists, we're doing so many different things. It's never yeah. just one job. It's no. like we're all over the place. Yeah. So something happened to you and it happened while you were dan dancing yes. and you got injured. Yeah. How did that affect you? What happened? Tell us the story about how your feet got injured. Okay. Uh, I was performing in a, a master's thesis for one of my friends at UCLA. Mm -hmm. I was going to Cal State Fullerton for a graduate program myself, but one of my friends was getting her master's degree in modern dance for UCLA, and she had, a, she had us perform in her piece, and it was outside on a Marley floor, which is usually used for ballet dancers. Right. We were barefoot, and it was black Marley, and the sun really got it too hot, the overshadows oh. of the sun. Um, when we were dancing, you didn't really realize how hot it was, but it was extremely hot. And I had a solo, so I was out there a little longer than most people, and it just burnt my feet to third, second and third degree burns. Oh so I was unable to dance or do anything for a long, long time, at least nine months. So that, that was devastating crazy. because yeah. doctors didn't want me to dance anymore. And I had the spirit and the passion to just heal myself and to get back to my dancing, but it did take a long time, and I'm still sensitive on my feet, right. you know. But yeah, I think that dreams do come true. If you just really have the passion to want to do it, you will heal yourself, and you know, you will get a chance to do it. And that's why I, I really continue to just teach and work and just study and just get better and better every day, so. Yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible story. Like you burnt second and third degree burns yes. on the bottoms of your feet. You fun. know, there is no dancing at that point. None. What what were you facing kind of like from a mental perspective, you know, to kind of keep going even mm -hmm. though you couldn't dance? Um, at that time I was saying affirmations every day. I'm very faithful. So I believe that I really could dance again. And mm -hmm. I, I asked God to, if I really got a chance to really improve myself by healing the injuries that were there um, every day, just saying that if I give a chance, if I get another chance to dance, I will be a great teacher. I will be honest of my performance, and I wouldn't just walk through things very lightly. And I, today, I still take those those same memories with me, as if, if because you don't miss things and they're, they're gone, you right, know. So definitely. I was really, you know, once I got healed, I just every day I danced and I taught and I have a joy for it and I'm mm -hmm. very passionate about it. So. And you have that spirit of gratitude that yes. I can tell, you know, I'm like very grateful. dance is a gift and I think a lot of people don't even recognize no, that, that so many special. people would love to be able to dance but they yeah. can't for mm -hmm. a different reason. So if you can do it, mm -hmm. you know, appreciate it and, and give back and share. Yes. And tell me some of the things that you try to instill in your students now. You teach in the city yes. at Steps on Broadway in the LA Extension but also you travel all over the world to teach. Yes. So what are some of those principles that you instill in your students? What I tell them is that they need to really stay in class. When mm -hmm. people people want to yeah. only come to class when they have an audition, which is not really that good because right. then when you have your chance to audition, you're under stress to try to do your best job. Whereas if you study every day, then you would be prepared or better prepared mm -hmm. to actually do a better job than just faking it. So right. I tell them that, to be honest about the choreography, you know, just learn it as best they can and to perform it as best they can. Yeah. And that comes with practice, and class is a practice um, place that you can actually learn and grow. So I, I instill practice through classes, and then when you get a performance, you have to give that 110% every night. So I live it and I breathe it, and yeah. I just continue to just instill in them that that's the only way. And you're supposed to be teaching right now, as a yes. matter of fact. <laughs> but how do you, uh, I guess, how do you keep going? You know, you've been through a lot of obstacles. Mm -hmm. You perform, you teach, you travel, mm -hmm. you have a life. Yes. You know, how do you keep it all going and keep a balance? In I'm your very life? determined. I'm very disciplined. And I think discipline really keeps you in order. Mm -hmm. If you really, like, skip classes or if you skip, if you overeat or there's always a complex that people it's maybe guilty or just you know overindulgence but right. I think that I'm very disciplined I try to be on time I try to you know just put in the full amount of energy that I really need or sometimes more mm -hmm. but I really live by discipline and you know just hope that 
I will continue to just have the energy to give my best. So That's wonderful. And you're such a great role model for dancers of all genres and of all ages. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, if people want to take your class, Jermaine's yes. class, um, you can take her class at Steps on Broadway or at the Illy Extension here in New York City. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the show I, today. I'm so happy to be here. And I hope I touch someone's heart so they'll come you to class. You touched my heart, Jermaine. So I that counts. <laughs> <laughs> and lots more people. So thanks for coming on the show. So um, now we are going to check out my video from Fela on Broadway featuring rhythm tap dancer Jalan Lambert. Check it out. I am Jalan Lambert. I play JK, rhythm tapper in Fela, and this is my dressing room. Um, over here are some greeting cards that I've collected over the years. Affirmation to change the energy in the room. This is a hand holding an egg, and to me that demonstrates how life is really fragile. Right here, what we have are my tap shoes. These are my performance tap shoes. This design is made by T.O. Day, and I used the model of Savion Lover's tap shoes for these, and he's somebody that I really, really admire. Over here, this is a photograph of myself with my mom, my blood mother, and my blood father at Parrot Jungle 2006. Over here is um, Dr. Reginald Yates, Guggenheim Fellow. Over here is a man by the name of David Fox, who was a former agent, um, agency talent here in New York City who passed away and shared a lot about Broadway. And I'm very thankful for that. And over here is my robe that I wear because this, this theater's cold. Al Hirschfeld. Over here is my second act costume. And this is my first act opening costume. And this is my dressing room. I'm here with Mr. Jalan Lambert. Hey, Ashani. Hi, Jalan. Hey. I used to take Jalan's classes hey. at Steps on Broadway many, many years ago. He teaches contemporary. He does amazing things, so many things that I really can't keep up. But right now, we're going to talk about Fela being back on Broadway. Yes. You guys just came back from a world tour. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be back on Broadway now? It feels amazing to get a second chance and opportunity to display our talents and to share what we taken around the world back to Broadway and to see the development and the maturity of the work because there was one version of Fela for the Eugene O'Neill and now we have a different version where you have half of the National Theatre Company from London and half of the original Broadway company coming together to create this masterpiece in terms of theatre that's never been seen. And I think for people like myself who were a fan of Fela Kuti's music, mm -hmm. even before the show came on to Broadway, yes. you know, to, to come to a show and be able to sing, you know, the songs and the tunes, and you just feel like, I mean, this is, you're being a part of this experience. And I came with my Nigerian friend, mm -hmm. um, Dorothea, and she actually knew Fela and his family. Sure. So it was a really, you know, kind of very personal and special mm -hmm. experience for me. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure it's changed you over the past three years that you've been doing the show now here on Broadway and yes. also touring worldwide. How has it changed you? Like, what has it done for you as a, as a performer? Well, when I got the, um, the job, I didn't know the extent and the magnitude of my role mm -hmm. until the first day of rehearsal. And I said, wow. whoa, <laughs> this is major. Uh -oh. Yeah, this is major. And I knew I had to engage myself and engage the people that I knew that could take me to that performance level where I can be on stage every night. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, I didn't, um, I had to work even harder with my tapping because that wasn't what I've been placing a lot of emphasis on the past um, 10 years. I'm a Juilliard graduate. And that curriculum is strictly contemporary where you learn uh, the greats, Paul Taylor, Alvin mm -hmm. Ailey, Jose Lamont, Martha Graham, and you have your classical ballet training. Fortunately for me during that era, I had a wonderful artistic director, Benjamin Harcarby, and he took he took an interest in my, my artistry and my, my gifts and said to me, Jalan, do everything. Mm -hmm. You have a, 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 a unique talent. Do not shy away from exploring everything and eventually people will come to know you. And I've held on to that. I've also held on to what he told me that, remember that you are an oak tree and allow yourself to be swayed. You can bend, however you will not be uprooted. So that being said, I, I contacted a trainer 
named Taj Shirahara who works with a lot of professional athletes from uh, tennis and the National Basketball Association. And I said to her, I need your help so that I can accomplish this goal of doing a year straight on Broadway without missing the show. And I'd like to do this as an offering to my ancestors, everybody that has come before me, to say, I give you thanks, I give you honor, and you have not forgotten, such as Captain Dunham, Pearl Primus, Alvin Ailey, Dr. Joe Nash, um, countless of, of others. And um, we did it. We did it because of her help. We um, showed up about three hours before curtain, and I worked out for about an hour and a half with her, where we did movement, retraining, stretching, and uh, mental work in terms of concentration. The thing is about um, being at a high level with your artistry, you have to master yourself. And you have to master a level of concentration. There needs to be respect for theater. There needs to be respect for professionalism because those things bleed. Yeah. People see it on stage. They may oh, not be yeah. able to articulate it. However, it, it, it's apparent. So I am thankful for this opportunity. I'm thankful for Bill T. Jones, oh, Steve yeah. Hendo, Will, Will Smith, and his wife Jada, and Jay-Z for being a part of this, and especially Questlove of the Roots. So I'm very, very thankful. guys, welcome back to Inside New York City Dance. I hope you enjoyed that video of Fela on Broadway. And now I'm back with a very special guest, someone who I have admired for many, many years. Um, I learned about her back in the day when I was a student at the Ailey School, and uh, I'm talking about Dr. Linda Hamilton. She is a clinical psychologist specializing in wellness for performers and performance psychology, and I'm so happy to have you on the show today. I'm welcome. so happy to be here. Yay! We met, uh, when was it, a few weeks ago or something, mm -hmm. and I sat down with you and I'm like, I'm so excited, you're coming on my show, this is going to be great. And let's talk a little bit about kind of what Jermaine touched on. Wow. Getting injured as a dancer is like one of, one of the worst things that can happen to us. Uh, not just the physical you know, side of it, but the mental drama mm -hmm. that, that follows it. How do we manage the stress, the anxiety of, of saying, okay, maybe I won't be able to dance again or I have to take some time off? How do we manage all of the anxiety that comes with injuries? Well, I'd love to give you one answer for that. There are a <laughs> number of ways of doing it, but that is the biggest stress the dancers experience, mm -hmm. being injured, and nine out of 10 dancers get injured. Right. The injury that Jermaine um, experienced was incredible, nine months. And for that, you would need a lot of support. She had her faith, that really helped. She has a very positive attitude. Mm -hmm. But realistically, come on, dancers want to improve. They want to be out there doing it. We have a short career. And so it's natural to feel upset yeah. when you have an injury. That's OK. You can have that for a few weeks. But you need your social support network. And part of that is physical therapy, mm -hmm. having friends, maybe outside of the dance field, Maybe having some interests outside of the dance field too. Yeah. Does that ever happen? That, I mean, that's important. I feel like I'm glad you said that because I feel like that's really important because some of us get so caught up in dance. Mm -hmm. And then it's like if your whole world is dance and dance alone, if something happens like an injury or a sickness or a job ends or whatever, what do you do? Frankly, having other interests helps even when you are dancing, okay? Uh -huh. But um, when you're not dancing, to have those interests and maybe develop them, mm -hmm. they might be your second career afterwards. Mm -hmm. She had a lot of different options. Yeah. She could teach, she could dance. Uh, I believe in having other interests, having good friends, and also your coping skills are so important. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, the profession tends to attract perfectionists. Yes. And if yes. we weren't perfectionists, <laughs> we wouldn't repeat those same steps over and over again until <laughs> we got it right, right. Right? How many plies and tendus have I done in my life? I'd hate to say. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't count. Okay, seriously. <laughs> but the fact is, perfectionism is a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. So on the good side, you have high standards. The organizational skills to reach them on the negative side, unrealistic standards, I'm not allowed to get injured. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm in pain, I'm going to keep dancing no matter what. How many yeah. times have we heard that? Oh my, how many times have I <clears throat> performed when I was not in the right, we're not uh -huh. gonna talk about that. But mm -hmm. yeah, we do it, we do it. And these are not the best ways to manage these situations. No, actually, frankly, if you're injured three to four days, if it's not getting better, go seek medical help. Right. 
In, um, knowledge is power. Mm -hmm. If you know what's going on with your body, you are empowered, then you can go and do what you need to do. Right. And if it isn't getting better, second opinion. Doctors are not infallible either. Right. So you want that, you want the coping skills. Uh, with that perfectionism, we can't have perfection, can we? Otherwise, if we did, we'd be in the Guinness <laughs> Book of World Records, right? right? Definitely. Doesn't exist. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about another reality of being a dancer in New York City, or an artist in general. Rejection. Mm. It just comes with the territory. It comes with life. Yeah, it comes, it comes with life, absolutely. But we're facing it, you know, on a regular basis. How do we overcome the negative thoughts that, you know, are internal, our internal dialogue that's not always the most positive? And then from, you know, outside sources telling you, oh, you know, you're not good enough in this, you're not good enough in that, or so-and-so got the job and you didn't get the job. Like, how do you manage all of the noise? Well, one simple remedy is to reframe every experience where you're putting yourself out there and you could get rejected as a learning experience. Okay. Then you don't lose. So you go out for an audition, I'll learn something. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm putting myself out there, I'm getting experience. But the reality is, and they've done studies that show this, when you get rejected, it activates your pain centers. So that when you lose something that you really value, whether it's your boyfriend or it's a job, it's like, hurting yourself, breaking your arm. Wow. They actually said taking two Advil, or taking an Advil for two weeks would get rid of some of the pain. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Rejection from an audition, I'm gonna go home and take an Advil, I'll be all right. <laughs> yeah. I'm not promoting that, but right. it, what was interesting <laughs> is that it really does hurt. Mm -hmm. And so if you can refra reframe it in a positive way, that's really good. If we don't have expectations, unrealistic expectations, like I have to get into that particular show mm -hmm. or that particular company, we can't control the outcome. Right. We can control how we go into it. Okay, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna be warmed up. Mm -hmm. I will do my part. I will look the role, right? I'll have fun. That, there's oh, nothing have fun. wrong. What's that, fun? Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Why not? Why not? I can go in and I can have fun. I can have control over how I present myself and my experience. Yeah. And if I don't get what I want, what can I take from it? What can I learn? And if there's something valuable, like I wasn't prepared, or maybe it's not the right genre for me, mm -hmm. and my strengths are in a different area, why not take that information? Right, and, and be open to looking at it from a different perspective, not just I win or I lose. I got the job or I didn't get the job and that's it, you know? Absolutely, it is not black or white, win or lose, mm -hmm. not at all. There's a lot of gray. And I think we can take something from every experience and Definitely. use it to become better, which is yeah. what we want, right? And what yeah. do we really want is to get on stage and do our, our thing, right? That's what we love. And, and so that's a good segue, as a matter of fact, because you know we, we showed Jalon Lambert, who's in Fela on Broadway and traveled around the world performing Fela, um, among, among other shows. Jermaine has been on Broadway and off Broadway and traveled all over. So once you're in that position where you're doing what you love, you're performing or teaching or whatever, there are still demands that are on your body and on you, you know, mentally and all of that. You know, what do you tell the dancers that you work with, whether they're at New York City Ballet, where you're a wellness consultant, or mm -hmm. at the LA School and a young dancer, you know, what do you tell them about maintaining balance, staying healthy mentally and physically? Well, first of all, I tell them that they need to know what the occupational stresses are in dance. Mm -hmm. It's not just as simple as go out there and do it because you love it. You need to check in with your body every day. Right. You're, going to be, you're going to be feeling different. Monday you might feel great, Friday you might be tired. Mm -hmm. You may have to adjust your schedule. I have a little joke with the dancers where I say, do you know how to fake looking like you're working hard? <laughs> <laughs> can, so, can you tell me how to do that, please? Yes, I yes. need to know. <laughs> you work on your, your core, your upper body. You know, you can still work, mm -hmm. but you may not be doing it three times with each group. Saving some energy, realizing that you're having uh, signals from your body telling you you're tired, mm -hmm. maybe you're getting the flu, whatever it is. So being aware that we don't have to be perfect, that there will be these physical stresses, that dancing, particularly ballet, is more difficult than every any uh, athletic sport. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we consider it an art form. Yeah. It is very demanding when you're doing those entrecesis at the end and you oh feel like gosh. you're dying, <laughs> there is a reason for it. Yeah, your body's saying, stop! Mm -hmm. <laughs> stop, 
save me. But yeah, so you have to really be in tune with your body and know, you know that's one. what you're feeling. Yes, that's yeah. one. And the other is we are trained to be stoic. Mm -hmm. So at eight years old, we're supposed to ignore good pain. Oh, that's right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it hurts a little bit, but there's a difference between good and bad. And being stoic doesn't mean that you can't go and find a friend to talk to, right. someone who you trust, somebody who will be supportive. I think dancers have such high expectations of themselves that they are upset if they're, if they're tired, if they're stressed. This is all normal. Mm -hmm. They look in the mirror. I mean, all kinds of things can stress you out. Right. And I like to give dancers the knowledge and then the coping skills. How you look at something will affect how you feel. Definitely. This is wonderful. Dr. Linda Hamilton, thank you so much for coming on the oh, show today. It's my today. pleasure. You gave such great tips, things for me to think about, and definitely things for my viewers to think about. So thank you very much. Well, I love dancers, and I, I just can't uh, say how much I enjoy what they do and not just to be in the audience but to find a vocation that you really care about. Yes. How special is that? It's very special and it, it's a blessing. So you guys can connect with Dr. Linda Hamilton at drlindahamilton.com. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Insight New York City Dance. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube at Insight NYC Dance. And I'll see you next time.